Men, as you can see, are still at the forefront of the state's political narrative, but one former New Jersey lawmaker is working to make that a little more balanced by creating a PAC to promote female candidates for election politically and financially. It's called Loretta PAC, and why not? Its founder is former Majority Leader, Senate Majority Leader Loretta Weinberg, and she joins us on Chatbox today. Senator, always good to see you. Welcome. Thank you very much. So you want to promote the next generation of troublemakers, women only, yes? Yes. Uh, you know, uh, as you probably know, I retired from the state Senate uh, back at the beginning of this year. And as I thought about how I was going to be spending my retirement, beside doing Zoom meetings with various organizations or hopefully with good groups like New Jersey Spotlight and Chatbox, I thought that really one of the best ways I can contribute is actually raising money for candidates, mostly in local office, not statewide, not federal. We'll have many other fundraising groups to call on, but women who run for office locally for their town councils, for school board, and helping to give them the resources to run good campaigns. So I had the first fundraiser of the Loretta PAC um, a few weeks ago, and we were privileged to give the first round of contributions to a group of women who are diverse in terms of uh, uh, racially, age-wise, experience-wise, and throughout the state. And uh, hopefully these small contributions will be an acknowledgement that they have many voices in the state behind them. So two things jump out at me from that. Um, a, um, why will more women running uh, more things make New Jersey better? And why the emphasis on local elections? Oh, well, to answer the second part of your question first, I think the emphasis on local elections became important. I, I know what it's like to run for council election. And I think people who run for council elections have less resources to call upon state legislators, uh, co uh, Congress people, senators have much wider fundraising apparatus that they can call upon. So that's why uh, we decided in this pack to concentrate on women running for local office. And why more women? Because we don't have enough voices in the state of New Jersey. I really believe that women have unique experiences that have to do with being mothers, being caregivers, being sisters, daughters, aunts, in so many family uh, dynamics that we just bring different voices that are really important. We are more generally, these are all generalizations and you can always find an exception to the rule, but we are more, we are generally more participa participatory, open, accountable. And I think women uh, help to balance government, certainly local government. We know about our children's schools, we know about the physical planning of our communities and how we get in and out of supermarket parking lots and all the other mundane things of life that make a good council person. Yeah, you touch on something there. There are women I know in elected positions, one in particular who I always say, hey, you should run for a higher office. She says she would. But the choices women are forced to make, and you touched on this a little bit, are more difficult than those that most men have to make in terms of getting into, uh, into politics and elected office and government, parenting, household management, soccer, softball, drama club, dance. I mean, you got to change that culture too, right? So that dads and partners become more a part of that, no? How do you get to that? Uh, well, I think we are getting to that, David. I see it in my daughter's generation and beyond. Uh, I think you'll see more dads at soccer games and volleyball games cheering their daughters and sons on 
than you would have seen in past generations. Um, so I, I think the culture is changing because I think our daughters have changed it. Uh, in more cases than not, they are working moms. So they, <clears throat> by necessity, have to uh, change that culture. So I think we see it, we are seeing a change. But is it more difficult for women? Absolutely. And that's why we have to accommodate women. And I thought a bill that Senator Teresa Ruiz sponsored went by with not a lot of notice. And that was to allow candidates to take money out of their campaign funds to pay for babysitting. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a phenomenal step forward. As I said, that it kind of went by with very little notice, but it helps to change the culture. If you can take money out to go to political events or, I don't know, attend or some to, or, or to take 20 people to Puerto Rico for the Super Bowl I was uh, trying and, to and have your campaign pay for it. Yeah, I was as, that's just an example. I was trying to think of the proper analogy, but you filled in the blank perfectly. Oh, good. All right. So your focus is on electing progressives. What about promoting conservative women? Um, do you leave that to the GOP? Yes, I leave that to the GOP. Our one um, caveat and that I put forth to each of these candidates was that you are pro-choice. We are not asking that that become a centerpiece of your campaign, of each individual campaign, but that is the only caveat for seeking support from uh, the, the Loretta PAC. Are there so, different variations locally where one could be considered conservative on property taxes or right. progressive on school issues, whatever? Zoning. I'll leave that to the locals, but this is definitely a democratic pack. So something that you uh, were really a spearhead uh, was this effort at addressing the toxic environment that existed in the Murphy campaign uh, and in government in New Jersey in general, the continuing use of NDAs, uh, a bill before Congress called the Speak Out Act, which bans them from covering harassment, et cetera. What is the environment in your sense, a couple of years, a year or so removed from being in it hip deep as an outsider? How do you observe things right now in New Jersey in that regard? Well, I think we've improved the environment in New Jersey, but have we improved it enough? The answer is no. We outlawed non-disclosure agreements in the case of sexual harassment, et cetera, in New Jersey. They are outlawed. And uh, in fact, the federal push right now is kind of based on our NDAs. But there is a very large segment of the legislation we passed that was left undone. It was passed by the Senate, but not by the Assembly. And that was to set up an apparatus to deal with issues of sexual harassment and such in the campaign environment because there was very little way to regulate that. Campaigns are not really part of the state apparatus, they're kind of individual. So the bill calls for the Election Law Enforcement Commission to set up an apparatus to look at this in campaigns, a place where women or men could come with complaints. That bill was held up at the 11th hour in the assembly Senator Nia Gill has the bill back in the Senate now, and I'm hoping to see that pass. That is a linchpin of the legislation that we passed to protect women. And I hope the legislature will look on it kindly in this session. All right. Still lots of work to do. Loretta Weinberg, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for coming on with us. Thank you, David.